I lived in the UK from 67 to 81 and became almost bilingual. Um, and at that time, British energy policy was a contradiction in terms. And I'm afraid it's got worse since then. So there really isn't a coherent policy to discuss. It's simply analogous to the progress that a sleigh it might make in the in the winter if you hitched a half dozen horses to random points on the periphery and let it move about according to which horse is hauling harder at the time. 50 point C uh, is an extraordinary policy failure that, that reminds me of when Britain and France were trying to build the Concorde supersonic aircraft, which would clearly have many problems, including terrible economics. And it, they went on for years realizing both that it was a bad idea, but nobody wanted to be the first to cancel it. This English-French uh, <laughs> you know, embrace of mutual folly is, is now playing out again in Higley Point C. Um, coming in at currently twice and probably three times the cost of alternatives that don't have any of the other disagreeable aspects of nuclear power. Uh, and I think uh, it, it speaks to the utter dominance of nuclear theology over British energy policy. This has been going on for over half a century. Some scholars believe it's because of the uh, links between the civil and military nuclear capabilities of the United Kingdom. Some think it's nothing to do with that, but simply the way that a hermetic group of influencers and civil servants and politicians all talk to each other and reinforce their biases and find it difficult to accept that this is a future technology as time has passed, the world has moved on, there's, there's no business case for it, let's cut our losses and, and let markets actually work. <laughs>